Welcome back to the Tom Hartman Program. I'm Alex Lawson, filling in for Tom, and I am joined in studio by Noah Weststrike of IfNotNowMovement.org. Uh, Noah, tell us a little bit about the demonstration at uh, APAC, and I know you then, I think, went inside uh, the conference, so tell us about that. That's right. So while thousands of people were gathered outside the convention center um, demonstrating and protesting APAC support for the occupation, um, four If Not Now members uh, purchased tickets well in advance of the conference to actually go in the conference um, and bring our message to the participants of APAC. Um, so what this looked like was entering the conference uh, like a normal conference goer. Um, I've been to several conferences there myself, and so um, I checked out some uh, some breakout sessions and interacted with some of the conference goers. Um, and at around 3 p.m., uh, the four of us gathered and we dropped banners from uh, the third floor balcony uh, overlooking the main lobby space of the convention center. And on this banner, it, uh, it said that if not now, uh, rejects APAC and rejects occupation. Um, we dropped these 15 foot banners so that many of the 18,000 participants could see. Um, and as we were holding on to our banners, um, we spoke Hillel's three questions, which I mentioned earlier, um, which culminate in if not now, when, where movement's name comes from. Um, and once we were grabbed by security forces and taken out, uh, we sang the song Lo Yisagoi, um, which is a Hebrew song uh, that speaks of a uh, nation not lifting sword against other nations, um, never to know war evermore. And this is something that's familiar to most Jews. It's a popular song. Um, and as we were chanting the words of Hillel the Elder, if not now when, and singing Lo Yisagoi, um, we were booed and the middle finger was given to us um, as we we're taken out of the building um, and to go from the third floor out to the front doors on Mount Vernon, uh, Mount Vernon Square took about five minutes. And so you had uh, this kind of amazing scene of four young American Jews that are proud of their people, proud of their uh, proud of Israel, um, but seek uh, to hold our American Jewish institutions accountable for uh, their upholding of this disastrous policy of occupation. Um, in the West Bank, and to feel booed and have my and have middle fingers stuck up at us uh, really showed us the divide of um, of where the American Jewish leaders in power and the actual people really lie. So, uh, the point of an action like this, um, there's a, a friend of mine, uh, Duncan Meisel, who uh, I've worked with for a long time. Who back in the the uh, fight for Obamacare. He, uh, we did Billionaires for Wealth Care. We did a thing called Public Option Annie, uh, where we turned an AHIP, which is the insurance lobby conference, we turned it into a musical. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had our messaging, and it was fun. Mm -hmm. um, but direct action, <clears throat> creative actions, banner drops, but the action is actually in the reaction. Mm -hmm. that, that is the point of the action. It is act, it, the, when you do an action, your cameras are not pointed at the banner drop as much as they are at the reaction to the banner drop or the reaction to the turning an AHIP conference into a musical. And what the point is you're trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. right? This is not a vanity uh, thing. You're not doing it for the, for the, the fun of being escorted out uh, and booed and jeered. And you know that all of that is actually part of what you're doing. Um, you're making it a little uncomfortable in this space uh, that where it is far too comfortable and pushing a repugnant uh, policy agenda. What is the, you know, you're on Tom Hartman talking uh, around uh, the country and on free speech TV and, you know, all over the country, people are hearing this is why you uh, took that action. Mm -hmm. What else have been some of the responses to it? Have you do you, do you feel like you're actually getting, you know, breaking through is what they say? I think we're absolutely breaking through. Um, what's interesting about our day of action at APAC was many demonstrators, many members of If Not Now, had family, loved ones, friends that were inside the conference, inside the convention center, participating in APAC's breakout sessions. And so our goal for this action was really to expose the divide there. Um, to show that people of conscience, Jews of conscience and morality, will reject the occupation, and that we stand up against APAC, which is a large organization that upholds these disastrous policies. And so even if 
we reach people inside and get them to see this divide, that would be a successful action. I can tell you that um, as I was being escorted out, um, there's one person in particular who uh, held his middle finger up at me and I was standing in front of him for a while as the officers were taking us. Um, and uh, this man later tracked me down and sent me an email and basically wrote an apology um, and wrote that while he uh, is a supporter of two states, for example, um, which is one view of uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, one possible outcome in favor of two states. He wants to uh, teach his son the value of humanity and morality and um, goodwill and all this stuff. And he told me he, even though we agree on all these things, he still felt under siege uh, by, by having a banner dropped. And well, I think that's a bit dramatic. I think we exposed this type of uh, division, this rift that exists in our American Jewish community. And so for this man who for all intents and purposes, is on the right side of history, um, is not willing to take a stand against APAC, which is the largest organization upholding uh, the occupation. And so it's interactions like this, small one, to get people to realize that there is a divide, there is a rift. That's what we're working towards. Uh, let's go right to the line. So Charles in California, you're on the air with me and Noah Westrike from If Not Now Movement.org. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Well, it's morning here. <clears throat> I was just trying to get a grip on what he's saying. Is he just trying to say that, you know, that uh, genocide and war is not good and that we shouldn't be supporting that? Noah, that is a direct question to you. Yes, I think genocide and war should not be supported in any form. Um, but specifically at If Not Now, um, we're working to end our Jewish leaders in this country. We're seeking to and their support for disastrous military policies in Israel and in the West Bank. Um, so let's let's go with the caller, though, because if uh, what are disastrous military policies of occupation in the West Bank? Like, what does that look like? What is it that you're saying? You're seeing that Israel, the state of Israel, is occupying the West Bank um, and you do not support the continuation of that policy. Sure. Um, Palestinians who live in the West Bank are subject to um, Israeli military presence every single day, every single hour of their lives. Um, this manifests itself in access to water, access to power, access um, to uh, to really just a, a, a well-rounded life. Everything, um, to jobs. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, the unemployment exactly. rate is, to, is astronomical. Not to mention uh, free flow of travel, things that we take for granted and see as human rights. Uh, these things are denied uh, to Palestinians. So things that are human rights uh, agreed upon, right? Uh, that oftentimes both Israel and America are signatories on things that say you're not allowed to do right. what Israel is doing in the West Bank. That's right. And uh, at if not now, we have we hold lots of different opinions about um, what's the right course of action, what's the wrong course of action for ending um, Israeli military presence in the West Bank. Um, but what really unites us is that we are American Jews, and we believe that the occupation is actually destroying our souls um, and our very existence on this earth. How can we live with ourselves and celebrate our freedom when uh, the freedom of others is so so uh, grossly denied? Yeah, the uh, the idea that uh, you know it's, I, I see not me, uh, but that you cannot be truly free. Uh, if your freedom is predicated on a boot on somebody else's neck, uh, that it's not just the police state occupation that folks living in the West Bank are under, but it actually impacts the life of Israelis not in the West Bank, that you can't have this occupation and it is okay and it makes things okay in Israel, that it is actually effects on both sides. That's absolutely right. And we feel those effects here as well, um, as evidenced in the APAC action and in our communities around the country. Um, this is an issue that is extremely divisive. It tears apart families and friends. Um, and really the only way to address it is by working together to end American Jewish support for this policy that we all see as um, as terrible. Noah Westrike with If Not now movement.org you can find out more information at if not now movement.org uh noah thank you so much for joining us here on the tom hartman program i'm very 
interested in hearing about your work, and I hope that uh, other folks can go online and learn about it, if not now, movement.org. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. I'm Alex Lawson, filling in for Tom, and we will be right back after this.